Hey, you. You ever heard of rocks? Rocks are pretty cool, right? I mean, look at all these rocks. Check out this rock. Except, none of those are really rocks. But, 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 but Dan, I thought all stone-like hard materials were rocks. Well, you're wrong. There's an important distinction to be made between rocks and another thing called minerals. Minerals like this, 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 and this are all naturally occurring in organic little things that have a specific chemical composition. For example, calcite has a chemical composition of CaCO3, and tyrannochite has a composition of, um, that. Rocks, on the other hand, are essentially a mishmash of a bunch of different minerals. For example, granite is about 72% silicon dioxide, 14% aluminum oxide, 4% potassium oxide, and the other 10% is just a bunch of other random minerals that I don't want to list off here. But Dan, what if you aren't a super genius and don't have the internet with you because you're in the jungle or space or something? How can you tell what mineral you have? Well, that's what properties of minerals are for. Properties of minerals are basically ways that you can identify minerals if you don't happen to have a subatomic microscope on hand to look at the chemical composition directly with. These properties can come in many forms, such as some of the more simple ones like color, streak, hardness, cleavage, or fracture, but you can also get into some pretty spooky complicated stuff like specific gravity or tenacity. <sighs> Today I'm going to be getting into stuff like hardness and color because they have pretty Wikipedia pages like this and this. I mean, look at those charts! Meanwhile, I won't be getting into stuff like specific gravity because those complicated things have stupid, ugly Wikipedia pages like this. Ugh. It looks bad. I mean, look at this math stuff over here. How can you read this? There's no pictures. Let's start with color. I mentioned this one earlier because it has a pretty Wikipedia page, but it turns out this sucks to identify minerals with. Come on, man, I'm trying my best. Let me explain to you why this sucks. Let me take this mineral and rub it on this porcelain, and then look. The color that rubs off is totally different from what I'm seeing. That's hokey. The color that rubs off here is called the streak of this mineral. The this, this streak is basically just a fancy term for the powder. So why would you really want to use streak? I mean, in this case, it's not really that horrible. It's just, you know, you can kind of figure it out. Well, let me tell you. Let me take this giant chunk of raw gold that I just have lying around and some calcopyrite and they look almost exactly the same. So how can we tell which is worth over a thousand dollars per ounce and which is worth like five bucks for a pound of the stuff? Let's try the streak method. We know from the powers of the internet that gold has a yellow streak and calcopyrite has a black streak. So let's try it. Ha! I gotcha! I knew that you were the faker the whole time! Get trashed! But what if you scrape your mineral on the streak plate and nothing comes off? Well, if that happens, there's a good chance that your mineral has a rating over a 7 on the Mohs Mineral Hardness Scale. What's the Mohs Mineral Hardness Scale? I'm glad you asked! The MMHS is a scale that, somewhat unsurprisingly, measures the hardness of minerals on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the hardest. Also, the reason I mentioned the hardness of 7 earlier is because porcelain, which is the stuff street plates are made out of, also has a hardness of around 7, depending on the por- but you know- The most common minerals used to represent each spot on this scale go in this order, starting at 1. Talc, gypsum, calcite, fluorite, apatite, orthoclase feldspar, quartz, topaz, corundum, and finally, diamond. However, this scale isn't exactly extremely well respected because of how imprecise it is. But I guess if you were looking for precision, you should have went for absolute hardness. I mean, it even has the word absolute in it. That I just, that's not funny. Like, I just realized that, get, like, that whole thing isn't even funny. I'm just gonna leave this in. So we've gone through three types of mineral properties so far. Color, streak, and hardness, but there's still one more that I would like to mention. Well, uh, it's actually two, but they kind of go hand in hand. The first one is called cleavage. When a mineral exhibits cleavage, that basically means that the mineral has some nice smooth straight edges. I mean, take calcite for example. If you check out those right angles, that's basically the definition of cleavage. Sulfur, on the other hand, doesn't really have cleavage at all. But I guess they weren't interested in calling this property not cleavage, so they decided to call it fracture. If you couldn't figure it out, cleavage is the presence of nice, clean, smooth edges, and fracture is the presence of jagged, uneven ones. At the end of the day, most minerals are just going to be rocks to people, and they always will be rocks, and there's nothing we can really do about it. But if you really sit down and care, there is something interesting to be learned. So, thanks for sitting down with me today and learning a little bit about minerals. Now I'm gonna go uh, retreat back to my cave home. Uh, I'll see you later, but hopefully we can meet again soon to talk about some more rocks.
Bye.